Genesis 2, 24 and 25. Read it with me. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. What is a family? There's a family of God that's in the Bible. And I assure you that we are a family. We are blood relatives by virtue of the cross of Jesus Christ. We were reborn into an eternal family. We are brothers and sisters, and we have the mission to care one for the other. Jesus said, this last commandment I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Can I get a witness here? And then there's the traditional family of father, mother, and their children. And let me tell you, it is the only family God will recognize. He has created male and female, and that's not going to change. He is the potter, we are the clay. The clay does not tell the potter what I want to be. Clay does not talk. It is only formed. You are a creation of God the Father, who is our potter. He is the shepherd, we are the sheep. We follow him. He does not follow us. What is a family? A family is the picture of a mother cooking dinner for someone she loves. It is the laugh of a baby. It is the strength of the father. It is the warmth of loving hearts. It is light from happy eyes. It is kindness on parade. It is loyalty one for the other. It is covenant love. Home is the first school and the first church I ever attended. I learned from my parents what was right and what was wrong. Family is where you go for comfort when you're hungry, when you're sick, when the world has beaten you up. They can wrap their arms around you and hug you and make the world go away. When you have been battered and bruised by the world, family will open the very door of heaven and will heal you. They will anoint your wounds with the oil of gladness. They will wrap their arms around you and make you feel like you are the most important person in all of the world. Families where joy is shared and sorrow is eased. They will be glad of your success. They will be delighted that you receive the promotion at the job. They will be proud of you making the honor roll at school. But they will buy every newspaper on the rack because you were the football hero or you made the honor roll or you were the businessman of the year, or you were the mother of the year. Families where fathers and mothers are respected and they are loved. They are never addressed as old man and old lady. If you have kids or grandkids using that kind of trash talk, you get it stopped and get it stopped now. The architect of the family is not the church. Because some of you are going to churches that no longer believe the Bible, no longer teach nor practice the Bible. You might as well be in a country club somewhere. The fact is the architect of the human family is God Almighty. He created Adam and Eve as man and woman, as the eternal pattern for the family. And that pattern has never changed. Any other pattern is rebellion against the word and the will of God. Hear that very clearly. I don't care what social mores are. I don't care what the trend happens to be. I don't care what the mood of the nations happen to be. Two homosexuals living together will never be a family, not with God Almighty and not with Bible-believing Christians. If you believe that God will approve of homosexual society, I refer you to God's Urban Renewal Project in Sodom and Gomorrah. I refer you also to St. Paul in Romans 1, 26 to 32, who described that kind of conduct and ended his theological treatise by saying, those who practice such things are deserving of death. Those are the words of St. Paul. A lot of you have his name on your church. You have no idea what he taught. What is the purpose of the family? The purpose of the family is given in Genesis 1, 28, to be fruitful and multiply. Say that with me, to be fruitful and multiply. To have children, not cats and dogs. What does God expect of a father? God expects an earthly father to reflect him. So take it from the top, God is love. He expects fathers to love their wives, even as Christ.
Christ loved the church. That's in the Bible, by the way. There's not a verse in the Bible that says to treat your wife like the oldest child in your family. That's not there. God is a provider. He's Jehovah Jireh. And he expects the earthly father to be a provider. The Bible says he that provides not for his own is worse than an infidel. In the Bible, an infidel is the lowest of the low. That means if you do not provide for your own, you're lower than the lowest. You love your wife as Christ loved the church. He loved the church when the church didn't even deserve to be loved. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. I continue, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. Let's pray. Thank you that God the Father has placed a blueprint for the family in the Word of God. Let us see it and let us leave here and practice it in Jesus' name. And all of God's children said, praise the Lord.